It's real with Jordan Demi. I'm here with Emmy Grace in Los Angeles and in New York. We got Demi Ramos. What's going on, Demi? Woohoo. Woohoo. <laughs> Demi, yes. says, Demi says woohoo. Woo Demi says woohoo. Woo so yes. I found you on social media because you do these crazy guitar videos. Yes. Um, but you also sing and write songs yes, and all I that do, stuff. Yes, I do. I do. So. Um, we had a friend, uh, Demi's friends with Blue to Tiger. If oh, no Blue way, Tiger. of course. And I feel like you're almost like the guitar, like Blue's like the, or like the bass the person. Bass. She's got the bass on and lock. You, and you got like the guitar. Like I would like to see like a Emmy Grace, Blue to Tiger collab. A little battle. Well, the comparison yeah. means the world. She's incredible. So Yeah, She's so that, that's, what I, that's what it kind of reminded me of like showing off how badass you are at an instrument and like making kind of like getting your audience right. that way. Um, so how has that been? like making those guitar videos and, and kind of being this like TikTok guitar virtuoso. Man, well, it's honestly been a little crazy because it was such an accident. I feel like I say that all the time, but like yeah. I really like wasn't going for like, I, I didn't know that that, you know, Trashy Tone Thursday with my videos that I post would be, you know, the thing that kind of like, you know, got me anywhere online. Um, I was literally just like, doing some like house production with my friend and I was like oh we should totally throw a solo on that like house like yes okay. four on the okay. floor just like yeah. and just did it side chained it and I was like oh shoot that's good maybe I'll like try that mm -hmm. as a video and I tell this story so many times it was just so ridiculous it went off like it you know got into the millions and I was like oh shoot like that is so scary and I, ne I didn't post again for like two more months I was like ah! and it, it freaked like me freaked out. you out like the, so the popularity freaked, freaked you out and, I, and then I did it again and it went even bigger and I was like, oh my gosh, okay, this is kind of crazy. So then again, I did one more time. And that was on a Thursday because I did side chain Saturday, side chain on two Saturdays. And then I started Trashy Tone Thursday and then I've never stopped since then. Made it all, made it all happen. If I'll tour, I'll literally pre-record videos and you like stack them up, stack them up so that I'm still able to not miss my Thursday. That's what those like con those content like marketing nerds on they'll tell you like stack your you know stack that's our big that's our biggest i think weakness Jimmy and i is that we like we don't stack videos and she'll be like send me a clip for tiktok and i'll be like, okay and then so like we were trying to be, do better than that so you're right. like you're like setting a good example i'll do it it'll be like it'll be like i'm up to like 4 a.m and my flights at like 6 a.m and i'm like finishing them all and i'm like oh my god oh wow that's discipline right there Just gotta get it get, yeah gotta get it done yeah. Gotta get it done. Yeah. D Demi, um, have you, what do you think of uh, Emmy's guitar videos? I mean, I just think it's so cool when someone is like specialized in their instrument. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You fell in love with guitar like uh, as a teenager. Yeah. A teenager. What was the first song that you learned how to play? Oh, wow. The first song I think that I learned how to play was actually, I'll say one of the first, one of the first was the solo on Rude. If you remember that song, why oh. you gotta be so rude, <laughs> whatever the oh, fuck that wow. song is. And I learned that solo. What happened like to that, those guys? Wah, 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 wah. Mm. I don't know. I only knew that one song, yeah. but I was like, oh, that's crazy. And I remember I learned it. And that was like probably the first thing I ever learned on guitar. Yeah. It's kind of weird that you had like a white reggae song as you're like. It was yeah. crazy. And I remember that solo. I was just like, this is nasty. And I was like young and i was like i have to learn it i think that was the first thing i learned did you play any of the instruments like did you play violin or anything like that when yeah. you were a kid played or? violin for like 10 12 years played piano just self-taught though violin I actually was um trained in but can you like crazy fiddle shit i like, definitely was a time where i was i was fiddling pretty hard but yeah. like it's just i never loved it as much as guitar like there was something i felt it was a bit more of a limiting instrument because it's so classical there's a lot yeah. more rules um, but now that I'm, you know, out of it and just doing it back for my own for fun, like it's amazing. I'll just like, you know, rip around and just be silly with it. But I like not having any theory for guitar or piano or anything like that. It feels just so free every time I play. Oh, so you're not like, you can't be like, okay, start here. And then like, you're not playing like pentatonic scales. No, like no theory, not even like the smallest amount of theory for guitar. So it's just like every time I'm just like. Let's see what happens today. Like, it's just like exciting every time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is usually Demi's question, but I'll ask it. Um, yeah. What kind of kid were you when you were growing Ooh, up? Oh, that's a good question, actually. I was, I was mischievous. Is that the word? Oh, yeah. I was a little, I was a little ferret, you know? Like, <laughs> a little ferret? I say I would like, I was really, really fucking curious. Like, at all times. I wasn't a bad, I was a really good kid. Like, at school, super good like really silent honestly i didn't talk and i was just like the little goody goody like 
like just yeah. like never getting into trouble ever i've never gone into trouble barely ever at school but then at home i was like a little more wild i don't know how to describe it like i would just kind of like get into like mischief and like i have a twin brother and he's like the pinnacle of perfection like everything you would want in a child is him and so there'd be like him just being like and he's you were like the, the honorary best. one yes he so exactly he's a rock star you're like i had to, like, I had to be the little boy. Right, I had to go the other way. He was just, and he's genuinely the best person. Like to this day, he's just phenomenal. He excels at everything he does. The most honorable, so much integrity. But just so then there was me, and I was kind of, you know what I mean? Like (laughs) I just had to kind of prowl around and make my own mark. And I think that I splintered heavily away. I was always we had the same heart, but as far as just like my interests, you know, like I love just like creating things from random things and like making random instruments and like using power tools I'd find and just like crafting. Like I was just always like up to something. Yeah. You You mentioned you were working on house production. Yeah. So do you like, so your first, like in terms of like producing was you were really into like dance music. It was actually the dance music stuff was completely for fun. I was making rock first, always started out in the rock worlds. Um, and I would just like make just like, I listened to a lot of Coheed and Cambria growing up and I just like honestly yeah, make stuff like Coheed that the, the best. Yeah. And I'd make stuff like that or like no effects. And it wasn't until probably I was like 19, 20 that I was like, Oh, like I like really, I love flume and stuff in high school. And I was like, maybe I'll like take a pass at electronic stuff. And it came pretty easy to me just because there was, it's just all in the computer. It was all right there. And I was like, okay, like this is kind of sick. And that's yeah. just kind of how it all happened. It was the same way I learned guitar is just combining weird sounds and just like getting the time tight. Like, yeah, I love it. Were you into, uh, I, the, who comes to mind for me is Ratatat. Oh. You into Ratatat? Oh, it, that was, yeah, actually. Yeah, because they were like, they would like do like yeah. electronic beats and like solo over the top of it. Fully. Yeah, that's yeah. actually crazy to think about. Yeah. But Did so, they have a song in like NBA 2K? Yeah, 17, I, I feel 16? like a lot of a lot of people know bands from like their their 2K placement. Right, that's yeah. like a that was a big thing if you got to the 2K placement. And I remember like I haven't seen it in a while, but I had like friends now and then who would um get uh, do you um do you remember the band Husky Loops? Do you know the band Husky no. Loops? They had a song called Every Time I Run that was like the FIFA like intro song like when you first. Oh, then I definitely it know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that that used to be a thing. I haven't heard it in a while. Yeah, you know, of like FIFA. FIFA placement it's yeah. those fifa like me like fifa 13 like that yeah. entire soundtrack i yeah. was like oh this is the best yeah i like, still love playing those games me too i play are you a video game person yeah. i definitely was a lot more before i moved as well but now when i moved to la i moved here about two years ago i have like no time which i'm grateful for but like growing up like i was so invested in my brother but is an incredible athlete as well so he loved all of the like sports sport games. games so i'd like want to play with him and his friends so i would be like training on my own time oh, like, like i'd be like how do you get it so i can like have a chance i think guys like, are just like naturally so i don't know what it is about video games and it's like it's not even like a real sport it's video games and they're still incredible and i'm like how does this where where am i lacking and now you can make so much money doing video games oh totally yeah. to- people are- i mean okay how about guitar hero and and rock band remember those so like being like such a talented like with your fingers on real guitar like does that translate over to those games you know i wonder because there's times where it'll be like a really quick like situation where i have the reflexes for it but like i played a lot of cod over COVID and like didn't translate. It was do you have a dope smoked. setup? Do you have like a fancy setup? I had, I didn't have like a dope setup, but it was nice. Got the job done. Had the headset yeah. at the whole thing, whatever. I played a lot of skate growing up. Um, I grew up skating. So playing skate was like amazingly fun for me. Um, and I just remember like building my team and being so locked in and like being like 12. And I'd have like this army of friends, like all over the freaking United States and be like, join my team. I could like message them on the freaking Xbox. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> I was so in deep. I was so in deep. Um, did you, uh, so did you like, were you like a skate kid? Did you like go to a park yeah, and like hang I was out with total like, total skate yeah. kid. And then when I realized that it would kind of, you feel like every, you hit that point where you're like, all right, I'm going to take this all the way or I'm going to, it's going to be a hobby forever. And yeah. when I kind of hit that point of like, you know what? I was getting hurt a lot. Cause obviously to progress and stuff like that, you kind of just have to get hurt. I kind of started to get really into filming skating. 
And I would just film my friends and then I'd make the music to go behind the parts because I couldn't figure out the copyright thing. So I was like, oh, like I'll just like it was 15. I'd like Ableton Light. I just would make a bunch of instrumentals. Yeah. Um, and just like put it all together. And that was so much fun for me. I loved that. Well, Demi, you'll be happy to know that you are an Ableton person and not a yes. Logic person. Um, oh, are man. you? Are, what are you? You Logic? I can't hate because I started out like Logic was the first program that I learned how to use because it was so simple. I know similar Logic to though too. Yeah, because it was what, what is it called? Bandcamp. That, oh yeah, Bandcamp or Bandlab. Something like that is so similar to like that that um, that app that comes on like every computer, like Apple right. computer. Garage but band. I did Garage switch band. over to Ableton recently, and like after a minute, you just realize like, damn, like it's true, like it's just. Ableton's so it's much better easier. in a weird, but re for certain things, if I'm like recording a bunch of live stuff, a bunch of live guitars or a bunch of live, just tracking like my friends, like we're all in a thing. I'll do logic. If I'm trying to like go in, make like a real if song, I'm trying to go in. I'll get on Ableton because yeah. even like you look at little things like the fade on logic, you have to like go up, click the, change the mm -hmm. mouse, get in there, select, but in Ableton, you just, yeah. I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, it's the little things like that where it's just very, it's not as user-friendly from the start, but then once you're in it, it's like a freaking, you could just... Yeah, if you're a Pro Tools person, then I'm concerned. Like, if someone's like, yeah, I use Pro Tools, like, mainly for everything. I'm like, what is it, 2007? I'm like, I'm like, so we don't relate on anything then. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know We're fundamentally well. different. Yeah, we'll, we'll never have kids. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is not happening. Yeah. Which, it's so true. When I hear someone uses Pro Tools, I'm like, why? How did this happen? Especially when it's, like, young person, I'm like, oh... Mm -hmm. So when did it go from like making fun music, you know, producing, making weird guitar videos to like, I'm going to be a real artist. And I'm going to make sing really singles and write songs and stuff. I think I was probably 17 or 18. COVID had just hit. I was a senior in high school. Um, and it was more in my head. I like head. how you say that you're like in your teens and you're like barely out of your teens. But you're right. Like, I'm literally I'm but you're like, just turned 22. I thought I, you were how? I'm like, how old is she? Like 35 or something? Like <laughs> Yeah, Some back when I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I just turned 22. So, yeah, probably what, five years ago or so. I, my 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. No, I must have skipped some numbers there. Is yeah. that right? Two. I don't know if we're going to hold you to it. Four, four, five, four or five years ago. Yeah. When I, right. So, I was kind of, I was more like a decision in my head where I was like, okay, like maybe I'm just going to like you know, put out some music that I've been making. It's stuff from when I was like 15. I put out this tiny wincy little EP and I had created it when I was 15, like in such secrecy. And one of my friends posted a video that was like, my friend is so shy, never makes music, but put out this music and went like viral, like for me, you know, gotten a couple of few million views and it changed hey. every first video ever. I didn't even have to post the thing. And I was like, huh? And then suddenly I just made an Instagram like a few months before I was like really not on the internet. So you're not a, you were not a social media. I kid. was not online. Like I was not, I didn't like, but you're the, the age to have been like an iPad kid. Right. I feel were... like I was just like borderline iPad kid age. And I, and I, I just was never, it was almost, that was like the like rat, you know, I was just like, yeah. I was like, I don't want to, everyone's on Instagram, everyone's on their phones. I was like, I don't need that. I'm outside. I'm just doing other things. But then I was like, oh no, okay, wait, I totally need Instagram to like be an art. Like this is yeah. just how it works. Yeah. Um, and I'm so grateful for it. I mean, it's wonderful how many people and things I've been able to connect to with it. It's a dream, honestly. But I think like getting on there and then seeing the music get, really not a lot of traction, but just like having people reach out to me. is like, oh wait, I should do this. And they got reached out to by a sync company and sold a bunch of music and did a bunch of things. And I was like, oh, I think I should not. I think I should leave college. I think that I should like do this. Do you have like some syncs that, that like, you know what they are when they come up, but like their names attached to them, like secret, like kind of things like. Yeah, I did actually some voiceover work that oh. I've heard. I will be like in the other room and I've heard my voice come on TV and I'm like, huh? And I'm like, what the, how did I get up there? And they'll yeah. remember that I like did something. That's been actually the weirdest. D Demi gets kind of uh, embarrassed when I talk, but she, she's got a great voiceover voice. Oh, really? Do yeah. I? Oh, my. Yeah. Do I actually? <laughs> Demi's like, get out of here with that. Yeah. Yeah. No, she knows oh, it. She knows oh, it. Thanks. Yeah. So do you have an interest in doing like voiceovers more or? Um, it was, it was more of like... I feel like I'm your career counselor. Like, what's your I know, plan? you're really what's digging your, this out of me right five, now. What's your five-year plan? <laughs> I'm like, you know... 
Mm. I think I definitely would in the future. I think it's one of those things where when it's time for me to be behind the camera, yeah. you know, when I'm, when I'm looking a little scrangly. Maybe <laughs> you, look a little scr- maybe you know, I'll- it's funny you say that is I had a friend back in New York. I was like, I came from like the, the Brooklyn, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. whatever. And I had a friend, a uh, paper boy Prince, cool. if New York people know who he is. Uh, they, they, I'm sorry. Uh, they are. And, um, but they told me like uh, you're 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 prime for doing voiceovers and broadcasts in your 40s, 50s, and 60s. Right. So like the plan was like do whatever art, music, whatever, and then like in your late 30s Voice start like kind of plan for like right. you know. And I'm going to become like Steve Harvey. I'm going to start hosting game shows and stuff. Yeah. I love it. See, it's the move, and then everyone's like wanting to tap in, and you're like all wise, and it's yeah. sick. Like I completely back that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that. Um. So in terms of uh. New music. Yes. You have, we're, we're playing the vague game. Uh, what, what, what what are you working? Are you like, because you have more momentum now than you did a year ago, are you taking like singles and song craft? You taking that more seriously than you were? Absolutely. And I think what's so funny is I was, you have a million streamer now. So yes, I I do have a couple that have gotten there, but the worst that top five, they disappear off the top five. Of your own of top five? Of my own top five. And I'm like, come back. What I don't like is that uh, you can't, you know how you can do the expansion on the desktop right. and see the next five? Right. But on the on, phone, mo- you on your phone, you can't. It's devastating. I don't like it. I don't either. Yeah. Got to get my streams up. But no, mm. I think what's funny is that I really... Stay indie. Got to stay indie. Mm. I was so like more, much more artist, you know, music and song creati- creation focused before posting online i was super scared to post online because i'd be like oh and i'm just gonna like you know be on tiktok and whatever so it was really weird for a while to just be like oh like that girl on tiktok and i was like no wait there's like so much more going on but then i had to kind of just like roll with it and vibe with it and now i'm like i make music too but it's i've always just made me you know what i mean that's what's if anything but the funniest part of it is it's everyone's like wait you make music and i'm like oh yeah like but it's been that the whole you know what i mean that's way before I was even had Instagram. I was, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's from this really funny thing. But it I, wasn't documented on social media, so it didn't not count. Not at all. And I was <laughs> right. I was just in this session the other day, and the guy was like, wait, so you sing? And I was like, oh, uh, yeah. I was like, did you hear the demo? It was the funniest thing. And I, you know, it was just funny. I, you just was, did a song with uh, Sophie and... Uh, yeah, I did, but... but. Well, as I just said that, I did not sing on that song. I only yeah. a guitar. You played guitar. Played guitar, but it was so fun. But we love Sophie. Those, those, Sophie is the freaking best, and Zoe is the best. Zoe's my roommate. Oh, um, yes. Zoe's your roommate? Yeah, we just moved in together. So she's the freaking bomb, and Zoe's a freaking, she's in, okay. Sophie's incredible. Zoe's coming through here at some point. <gasps> she is. Yeah, I'm friends with Amanda. The best. Okay, mm-hmm. so you know, we're yeah. intertwined. I know the crew. Sophie, Zoe, like, I love those girls. Sophie and Zoe, that sounds like a sitcom. I know, it does, I'm, right? I'm Sophie and Zoe. Yeah, uh, you, so did you guys make that song together, like, as a roommate thing, or, like... No, before, so Zoe and I have been friends for a bit. We just moved in, because we're literally, we're besties, but, like, mm. that song was all done before I even, you know, decided to move in with her. Um, and it was really exciting. She had the song, and she just asked me to come, you know, lay a little feature down for the remix, and I was like, I'm yeah. so down. Like, easy, easiest yeah. yes ever, and then Sophie killed her part, and it was just really fun. Just like when John Mayer did the guitar for Kanye. Oh, I didn't know about yeah, that. Yeah, he did. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And Frank Ocean. There's John really? Mayer, Frank Ocean. Really? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Really. I don't understand how, like, John Mayer got, like, the cool card. How, he, it, he really was the cool guy. Is the cool guy. Yeah, like, all the, like, the cool people like him. So, I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. Anyway, John Mayer. Shout out John, John Mayer. John Mayer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, Demi is like knows more about guitars than I do. Oh. So I texted her last. I was like, Demi, you need to like lead the guitar discussion. Yeah. I think Demi- the first thing that came into my mind was, are you Gibson or a Fender girl? <gasps> Fender. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> You're like, really? No, Fender. Yeah. Fender for sure. For me, I think, um, I don't know. I, it's for me, it's really uh, on a, on a, on a basis of tone. I could see why it kind of rivals, but for me, it's the necks, the neck, and the lightweight, and the body, just the way it all is. It's more of a feel thing for me, which is why I play Fender over actual sound. Because I usually get a f- all of my strats I mod out heavily, so it's kind of like doesn't even sound like a strat anymore. It's more just the body that I really. Use that is so interesting. For. I I never considered that. I always felt like I was associated Fender with like softer, jazzier tones, like melodic kind of like, right that energy and then the Gibson was like, oh, like hard rock, but it is true. Like the body 
the weight of a fender is just more like you can move around more. And the neck is so convenient. It's really, especially because I'm a small large hands. person. I'm a small person. So like, I really need that. And that I think too, with like an S, you know, with an SG I could do, but then that floating bridge is a little, it's not my favorite. So like I'm left with a Les Paul and then I'm just kind of like getting way down. I'm like sagging on stage. But with mm-hmm. what I literally for my strat, my main strat I use, I fully, it was a single coil and it's fully H H H now. So it's all humbuckers. And um, it does not even sound like a Strat anymore, which I which I do love. Do you have a? Are you a pedal maniac? Of course. Or, yeah. Of course. My favorite pedal is the Rat pedal. Oh, you're oh, a Rat pedal. Person. Love that pedal. Uh, love it. I love the Rat. Literally, there is a long time. I use a Kemper now for live, but before Amp Sim, there was a long time where I would run an entire show with a freaking with rat. rat pedal and a and reverb. a fucking reverb, and that was it. And I was locked. That's it. And I would just put the reverb on for solos. And otherwise, I was a full rat. And wow. I loved it. I'm going to put this clip up on TikTok and hopefully the, the guitar nerds find it. Hopefully, they're, they're going to they're gonna be so mad. Oh, like, yeah. What did you just say? Is it what you just said? Is that, uh, you know, I, I leaned like, I know uh, Demi. I'm friends with Demi. I'm friends with, you know, you know, City Dupuis from Speedy Ortiz. I think so. She's like a pedal, like. Oh, I love that. She, yeah. I must know. I must have seen her. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, she was voted. Uh, she was voted on the Rolling Stone top fifty guitarists. Really? Top two fifty. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I gotta check. Speaking her out of that, that um, do you have favorite guitarists? Of course. Do you? Could you do a top five off yeah. the top of your head? Easy. Okay. Who's in your top five? Tom Morello, Van Halen, um, Steve Vai, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jennifer Batten. I'm not familiar with Jennifer Batten. She. Uh, was actually Michael Jackson's touring guitarist. Oh, she yeah. She ripped, ripped really freaking art. She's incredible. Yeah. So that's my top five. Oh, I like, see, we, we actually have talked about shredding versus not shredding before. It's an interesting thing, right? Because yeah. someone can shred, but not necessarily be the best rhythm guitarist. Be incredible at the guitar, which is a crazy thing to kind of yeah. say. Could you, could you, I know you like to sing. You're, you're a good singer. I'm not just going to discount your voice at all. But like, it'd be cool to have like, uh, you like a Santana kind of setup where you like have right. like a band and you have like powerhouse vocalists come in and do songs with you. Right. You know? That kind of stuff is so cool to me. And I yeah. think I love Santana too. If I had six, sure. I would have thrown Santana on the list. Yeah. 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 Um, but it's true. It's really true. Your your parents like uh, music nerds no, and stuff. Not really. Even that's wild. Slightest. So you're like 22, and you're into like all these like 70s and 80s guitarists, right? Without parents, usually it's like, yeah, my dad like used to play the no, CD. No, straight. But... Not even a little. I think the only music that would play when I was a kid Is he like was like a math teacher or something. He's just a total like he loves like movies. They're art. My parents are artsy. Yeah. My mom's a dancer, like stuff like that. But like not the music. Like it's not a music, not yeah. at all. And my brother's like freaking smarty pants. He's so freaking smart. So yeah. like he's not a really, you know, the creative either. Right. Um, so it was really, I found music through skating, honestly. And my love of rock, I would skate to these things. I'd find in skate parts, I'd find like no effects. And, and I would always yes. love the solo so much that I'd get to the solo. And then I just keep listening to it over and over and over and over and over again. And then. I found Eruption, and that was just one big solo. And I was yeah. like, I like this song the best. Can, when, when, how old were you when you like went for the neck tap? Thirteen. You went like neck yeah. tap. How how long did it take you to actually like make a usable sound? Probably like four days of like ding, you know that motion over and over again. <laughs> I probably got it, but it was so funny because I remember I had like a Squire at the time and a little cube amp that I'd busted out. Like the, the speakers, was it was all distorted. And I was like sitting there and I was like, I'd put it on like metal patch. And I was like, why doesn't this sound like Van Halen? What's wrong? <laughs> I was like so confused. I was like, but that tone. And then I, when I found out about pedals and matching and amps, I was like, it was, it was heaven for me. Mm. Um, and well, then what I now- What person are you in like a guitar store? Do, are you the one that like will sit down by the amp and just like- just like everyone's like bro like it's so funny because i feel like a girl going into a guitar store everyone's kind of like, i know they're always like what are you doing here like do you want a microphone and like, it feels like do you need so help bad. you want me to t- explain right. something to you sometimes i'm shy but like, you don't you don't know like, if it's like, like here's guitar- the pink guitars um, right and they'll they'll hand me some of the squat and i'm like come on now i think sometimes i'll go in there and i'm really shy and i'll try not play anything because i just don't want to deal with people being like oh i'm sure you don't know what you're talking about and sometimes if i'm like if I'll get a weird look, I'll just go down. I'll just do it. And then I'll be like, oh, that sounds good. <laughs> and I'll just, and then and I'll, I'll, sometimes I just, I got to do that sometimes. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just have to be like, 
listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, usually I'm pretty shy. I won't sit by the ant forever and just like tinker around or like anything like that. But it's always fun to hear people going crazy. I'm like, I love it. So we you can't get too much detail, but tell us what you have coming up yes. in uh, the fall. I love that. I mean, the fall, I got some shows I'm really excited about. Um, lots of, honestly, I'm in the studio so much right now, just like every day, just really. Are you wanting to make an album? Not, not you don't, have to, but like, are you like, do you like the idea of making an album versus, Absolutely. versus this kind of jaded 21st century? Like it's all about singles. People. I'm blah, blah, blah. so into the idea of a collective body of just music. That I th- feels really cohesive. I think what really helped out the album as like a, a, a an art form, if you want to call it that, is the success of Chapel Roan. Yeah. Because that's like, every song is like four minutes long. It's like, you know, there's 16, tr- 14 tracks. People want to get into that. And that's how I feel yeah. like you can really build something too. I'm definitely interested in that. I don't think that I would come right out the gates dropping an album. I think yeah. I'd probably do some EPs if anything, but for sure, something that if it were dropped as an album would totally make sense. Speaking of uh, Santana, I think it'd be cool. Like when you make your, not, I'm not your manager. You have your management's over here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> got a little nod for the management, but I think it'd be cool to have like a, uh, you know, a, like at least one like instrumental track, like at the end, like, oh, a, yeah. like a six minute Or even long. an intro. Yeah. I like, have one already. That's like, like, like eruption. Do right, like an eruption right, right. Sort of thing. Yeah. Or like, um, I think about having that in a show would be really fun. Or, Not to have such a, such a gluttonous moment there but i think it would be really fun to just have yeah a or like that, that like intro like, at the, like that's what you used to do like back in like you know um you had like uh steve miller band and cheap trick and like yeah. all these bands that would do these cool like elo would do these For cool sure. like intros and like kind of you know are, are you into prog and always oh like, yeah to Coheed. you listen to Coheed. yeah so. yeah love coheed yeah so but did you get into like real like king crimson and like <laughs> The real nerdy shit. But I would. Shit. Here's yeah. the thing. I haven't as much delve in, but I would. And I would love it. Honestly, of a, like, kind of, I honestly love metal too. Yeah. I don't know. A lot of Pliny stuff, I don't know. If you don't, you don't get too mathy with it. Right, right. But, but there is some stuff that I really just love that's just purely instrumental that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Yeah, yeah. We're like right. math rock. Math Math rock. rock. Yeah. I got into kraut rock for a while. Like I love the, that's like the motoric where it's like just one, like the same beat over and over again. And somebody like, and it's kraut rock because it's like started in Germany. Oh, cool. Yeah. Interesting. Like Noi, the band Noi. Okay, cool. We're getting real, check we're, them out. We're getting real we're deep. We're getting here. deep in. We're getting real deep. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think uh, that whole, I love that that like metal or instrumental, like Demi loves Turnstile. Oh, cool. And I, love Turnstile. I think that's one thing that uh, people love Turnstile for their energy and like their, you know, like the rock, you know, but like I think that they got cool little, um, you know, like little, Segways and you know right, I, right. I really think they music songwriting some cool is stuff. top yeah. super yeah. cool band yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah I think if you can like strip down like a grunge bit like same as you can do with Nirvana if you like can play a Nirvana tune on acoustic guitar and it's still be like you can hear like the beauty of a song you know still without that's all such a the, great the that's the, the best test right just like if you can still let's say you know it's a good song you know and you can play it acoustic. This is brought up in a session I had yesterday was we wanted to do this chorus that like chance were heavily Do you play involved. acoustic at all? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. I do love it. Um, and we were like, I don't think we can have the chorus be based around chance because on acoustic, that would sound really crazy. It just wouldn't work. And it's so true. Like that's really how you know, right? If a song holds up. Yeah. It works on the That's one thing I appreciate. Chords. The one thing I appreciate about like the whole like uh, viral, viral video thing. Right. Um, and like viral tracks, viral sounds on TikTok. Is that like right. stuff that maybe was good enough to be a single back in the day that didn't get a chance right. to, or like some song that was kind of underrated. Like, right. I think, you know, remember how big, uh, something in the way got Nirvana. Oh, like yeah. that wasn't a single. I loved that song when I was a kid. And then I was like, Oh, it's like viral now. Right. Like, is that crazy? Like, it's really? People were, things yeah. are coming back big. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, one more thing. What are you listening yes. to now? Ooh. I'm listening to a lot of the stuff I listened to when I was growing up, I'll be honest. Yeah, I we... still, I listen to a lot of No Doubt, a lot of Paramore, a lot of Coheed, um, Amy Winehouse. But I also have been listening to Remy Wolf and Lola Young. Um, I think they're both incredible. We, um, lo- we love both of them. They're, I mean, they're both so incredible. Yeah. And I think that uh, they're just like really a modern, cool influence for me i just love everything that they do so yeah i think we're heading in the right direction music music the all artists are really are really uh doing their thing right now you got to get right it up i mean yeah yeah there's very blurred lines like it's weird how like billy eilish like 
uh, Birds of a Feather is like the number one alternative song. Like, how is that alternative? Right. Isn't that yeah. funny? Yeah. I really thought about that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So we're going to wrap this up, but uh, we're, you're going to perform for us, which yes. I'm really excited about. As always, go to popdust.com for latest in pop culture and music news. Follow me on Instagram at Jordan Edwards Studio. Follow Demi at Demi underscore Ramos. Our past episodes, clips, everything is at jordanandemi.tv. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. And here's Emmy Grace performing. Oh,